Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can give your users the ability to choose whether or not they want to have your app displayed in light or dark mode, or let it be applied as per the system settings. We'll be looking at the color scheme environment variable, as well as the SwiftUI preferred color scheme view modifier. In addition, we'll also be taking a look at the UI Windows override user interface style property. If you like this video, please leave a comment below and give it a thumbs up. Be sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring the bell to get notified of new videos. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. I often wish that Apple would allow us to choose on an app by app basis if we wanted to display the app in light or dark mode or use the system choice. Unfortunately, you can't, but we as developers can code this capability within our apps so that our users can make that choice. There's a starter app for this project and you can download it from the link in the description below. There's not much to the app. It has a VStack embedded within a navigation view and the VStack has a button, a navigation link, and a text view. The button toggles the state property and displays another text view as a modal sheet. The navigation link pushes another text view onto the navigation stack. And the text view is waiting for us to code so that instead of saying unknown, we'll get the current color scheme, either light or dark. I've included some assets for this project. There's an app icon and an image that I use for the launch screen. I'm using a storyboard to display the launch screen because I find that the PLS version of displaying an image to be buggy. If I run this app in the simulator, like this iPhone 13 Pro, I can switch between light and dark mode by using the keyboard shortcuts Command Shift A. The first thing that I want to do then is to be able to display that current mode within that text view. Well, in SwiftUI, there's an environment variable that will provide us with that information. So in content view, let's create one. And here's a tip for you. I never remember the names of the different environment properties, but because you ended them using a key path, I can start with add environment with two parentheses, but leave the key path out and then assign a variable like this. Then you can go back to the key path and enter slash dot, and you'll get all of the properties to choose from. And the one that I want is obvious, it's color scheme. We can use this now in our text view using string interpolation. But you can't just use the variable as is. We'll need to instead use the string describing that current property. Let me run this now. And when I switch between light and dark mode, you'll see that that text view updates with that corresponding mode. It's pretty easy to be able to give the user the ability to switch between light and dark mode. First, let's create a segmented picker offering the user to select either light or dark mode. So for that, I'll need a state property that I'll call color scheme, and I'll assign it the value of zero initially. And we're going to use this to choose our scheme to be light. And if I want it to be dark, I'm going to change it to a 1. So now that we've got this state property, we can create a picker. And I'll bind it to this property. For the purposes of this app, we can leave the localized string as empty and then just bind it to the color scheme. Next, we can create two text views one for light and one for dark. And then we'll tag them with a zero and one respectively. And we'll also make sure that the picker style is segmented. Let's add a little padding as well. Now, all we have to do is use the preferred color scheme view modifier function and apply it to that whole view. We'll use a ternary operator on our color scheme property to set the corresponding color scheme. So if the color scheme is equal to zero, 
will specify light, otherwise dark. If you test now in the simulator, you can switch between them by making a selection. And notice that the text view updates as well. If I try to manually switch with the command shift A, nothing happens. We've basically overridden that system choice. If I tap on one of the buttons to present either a modal sheet or enter into navigation view, you'll see that the preferred color scheme is passed on as well though we could, if we wanted to, override that on any child view. Let me exit the app and then run it again on the simulator. If I switch to dark mode, for example, and then return to the home screen using the Command Shift H, and then do two Command Shift H's and swipe up to remove the app from memory, if I tap on it again, I'll see that the dark mode setting didn't persist. Well, that's very easy to resolve because we can use an app storage to persist that choice to user defaults. All we have to do is change that at state property to an app storage property and provide a key. And we'll just use color scheme as the key. So now anytime we choose a different selection, color scheme will be updated and it'll be stored in our user defaults. If we build and run again and choose, say, dark mode once more, and then exit the app and make sure it's removed again from memory, when we open it again on the simulator, we'll see that that choice has persisted. Well, this is great, but what if we wanted a third option, and that's to give the user the ability to choose either light or dark or system? being that they let the system decide the color scheme. So let's add one more text view to our picker. We'll call it system and set a tag of two. The problem we're going to have, however, is that the preferred color scheme modifier only accepts a color scheme enum, and there are only two choices, light and dark. So it won't work for us. So let's comment out that modifier and see what else we can do. Well, it turns out that there's another option, and that's a property that we can apply to a view controller's UI window and all of its subviews. And that's the override user interface style. It has a style, and we can see that the default is something that's called unspecified. If we drill down on that type, I see that it's an enum, and it does have three values, the light, the dark, and the unspecified, which is what we want. They're just integers 0, 1, and 2, where 0 is the unspecified case. And this is almost exactly what we want, except our 0 case is light, but we can change that. Now, another issue is that we're referring to view controllers and UI kit here, and we're in Swift UI. And if you go back in time through to the early days of SwiftUI when there was an app delegate and a scene delegate, there was this thing called the window scene and the window root brew controller. It was using a UI hosting controller to assign the entry point. Now though, we have app main and that's much easier for us. But in order for us to apply a override user interface style, we'll need to find that key window. Now I tried a few different things and a solution that I had was kind of working, I wasn't particularly happy with. So I posted a question to Twitter and fortunately Gavin German pointed me to a gist that he had created using Write Freely's GitHub repository and some code from there. I took a look and indeed this works better for me. So I've modified his gist slightly and I want to step you through how to implement that code. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to create a color scheme manager class that I can inject into the environment. So let's create that file first. We'll call it color scheme manager. And within that file, I'll create a new class called color scheme manager that has to conform to the observable object protocol. Inside there, I want to be able to determine what the key window is. 
So within that class, I'm going to create a computed property called key window, which is an optional UI window. Now this means we're going to have to change our import to UI kit. Next, we can use a number of guard checks to determine if one exists. First, We'll check to see if we can find the first scene of the UI application shared connected scenes. Next, we'll see if we can set that scene as the window scene delegate. And then we can see if we can assign the window of that scene delegate to a window property. And if we can't, meaning one of these three lets had failed, will return nil. Otherwise, we'll return that window, which will be our key window. Well, now that we have the key window, when our app launches, we can apply an override user interface style. And that'll correspond to the value that is in our app storage color scheme property. And we'll want to set it every time that value changes. So I want to move that app storage property from our content view, and I'm going to put it into our observable object class so that we can observe changes no matter where we are in our app. This does mean, however, that we'll have to remove the private designation. And app storage is not known to UI kit, so we'll have to change our import to Swift UI. Next, let me create a function that I can call when the app loads or when this value changes. And I'm going to call it apply color scheme. What we'll need to do then is to apply the user interface style where the raw value corresponds to our color schemes integer property. Well, the problem is that I have used zero for light and it should be the unspecified case. And that might confuse this in the future as well. So let's be safe and create an enum called color scheme that has an associated type of an integer. And then we'll list all of our cases in the correct order. And I'm creating this outside of our manager class itself so that we'll be able to use it in our content view. And our three cases are the unspecified, light, and dark. So unspecified will be zero, light, one, dark, two. Well, next, I can then change the color schemes app storage from an int to a color scheme type and then specify the default as whatever I want. So let's specify it instead of being light to be unspecified because that's what people typically expect. Now we can use the integer value as the raw value for the UI user interface style that is needed for the override user interface style. So within our function then, we've got our key window, which is optional. Its override user interface style is going to be equal to a user interface style whose raw value is equal to our color schemes raw value. Now then we can apply a did set property observer on our app storage property and call this function every time it changes. Next, then we'll return to our entry point and create a state object that we can call CS Manager and instantiate it as an instance of the Color Scheme Manager. And then we'll inject that into the environment with our content view. And then when the content view appears, we can call that CS Manager's Apply Color Scheme function. Returning to our content view then, we'll need to add an environment object that we can call CS Manager that is of type Color Scheme Manager. And then for the preview, to stop it from complaining, we'll inject an instance into the environment. Next, we'll have to change our picker selection to be a CS Manager color scheme. And then for each of the tags, we can use the corresponding enum case. This is much cleaner and easier to read. 
I'm going to run this on the simulator to check, but before I do that, let's make sure that I'm in light mode. So I'll run the app now, and I'll change my segmented control to dark. And you can see that it changes. Perfect. If I exit the app and remove it from memory, and launch it directly again from the simulator, once again, I'm in dark mode. Perfect. If I try using Command-Shift-A, it doesn't affect the change. However, if I switch to System, you'll get whatever mode your system is currently in. And in my case, my system is in light. If I do Command-Shift-A, it does change this time. So let's exit the app to the home screen and remove it from memory. I can see we're still in light mode. So let's do a Command Shift A while on the desktop to change it once more to dark. Launch our app once more, and it's changed. Perfect. And also, as before, all child views keep the same color scheme. Well, that's it. I hope you've learned something new here, and you'll be able to use it in your own projects if that's what you want to accomplish. I'm always interested in ideas or topics so please DM me on Twitter with suggestions, and if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. Thanks for watching.